A few weeks ago, I was very bored one morning and I decided to do a little experiment. My little experiment basically consisted in counting every single human interaction that I had during the day. Now, for practical purposes, I decided to establish that in order for a person to count as an interaction, he or she should be no further than three meters or around 10 feet away from me. So I repeated this exercise for seven consecutive days, dividing my interactions into total number of interactions, followed by interactions that included eye contact in them, and finally interactions with actual conversations. The results were quite interesting and eye-opening. The first and most evident discovery was that I was in serious need of a new hobby. <laughs> no, but for real, on a daily average, I would have a total number of interactions equal to 73, out of which I would have eye contact with 24 of those people, and I would actually have a conversation with only 19. These numbers got me thinking. They got me thinking about the influence that we have on each other, no matter how minimal, whether we're conscious about it or not. And that's exactly what I want to talk about today. We're all going to talk about why people matter. We're going to talk about why people should matter to you, and we're going to talk about why you sure as hell matter to other people. My name is Brenda. I was born and raised here in Monterey, but I'm currently getting my photography degree in LA. To be quite honest with you, I didn't used to care much for people a few years ago. In fact, I was such an obnoxious little human being that I consciously and exclusively wanted to hang out with beautiful people when I was a teenager. Because of this, when I first started photographing, it was kind of the same thing. I wanted to photograph what media and society had taught me that was beauty because I believed that the key to a beautiful and successful photograph was a beautiful face in a beautiful place with beautiful people. And they were, I mean, look at them. The photos were beautiful, but the thing is that I would look at my photographs a few weeks after, only to realize that they were beautiful and that was it. There was no story, there was no real emotion, and there was no deepness to it, and that was okay. But the thing is that I didn't want to take photos that were just okay. I wasn't really changing anything, you know? I mean, I was changing a whole bunch of Facebook profile pictures, if that counts for anything, <laughs> but nothing else, really. I've always been a night person. I have sleeping problems and I'm a huge fan of beer. So I would rather go out to the city and explore than stay in my bedroom, very, very bored. I would often go out with friends, but more times than not, I would go out by myself to see what went down during the night. I would find myself tangled in all these very intricate and weird adventures, and I would have all these very bizarre and deep conversations with people whose faces and names I would forget the next morning. I didn't realize that this was the perfect source of inspiration at the time, which is why I never carried my camera with me to all of these adventures. It wasn't until I went up to one of my favorite teachers one day, one day complaining about how bored I was with school and asking for extra assignments on the side that she said, just go out and document your life. You go out every night anyway, take your camera with you. She wanted 10 photos in two weeks and I came back with a whole web page. And the reason that I came back with a whole web page is because I would go out by myself, right? And I would start stopping strangers on the street, asking them to allow me to photograph them and I would generally be half drunk, and they would generally be kind of in the same state, and accidentally, I would end up having some of the most intricate conversations with some of these strangers. All sorts of people, for some reason, started opening up to me. I talked to people whose parents had committed suicide. I talked to people who had contemplated suicide. I talked to people who had actually attempted suicide. Thankfully, nobody committed suicide in front of me, but I talked to homeless and millionaires and old dudes and young adults, models, actors slash producers, bouncers, waiters, all sorts of people. Sadly, because of my half-drunk state, I would often forget part of these lovely conversations the next day. So instead of cutting down my drinking, I decided to get a voice recorder. I had my 10 photographs probably the first night that I went out, but I, I couldn't stop documenting anymore. I was hooked. I wanted to capture the essence of people because I realized that my concept of beauty had changed dramatically. A beautiful face in a beautiful place with beautiful uh, lighting now meant something completely different to me. And on top of that, I now had stories and deepness and emotions to my photos too. I was absolutely obsessed with people and Midnight Memories, the name of the project, and of the One Direction album, which I should have checked before buying the domain for a year, <laughs> was officially born. 
So the, the, dynamic, the dynamics changed, obviously, because I now had a voice recorder and I couldn't just go around recording all of my drunk conversations. I mean, I do value my life a little bit. So I would devise some kind of icebreaker for me and these strangers. Questions that I had regarding life. I would ask them for words of wisdom or their opinion on monogamy or if they believed in true love. You know, things that had me confused at the age of 22. What I did not expect was for their answers to confuse me even more. When talking about true love, for example, a woman told me, and I quote, true love is an emotion that is also a feeling that can't be scientifically proven, and it overcomes you, and it kills you, and it's also life. <laughs> now, when you have drunk, a statement like that really gets you questioning your own beliefs. This guy, we're talking about relationships. He goes, you want the best relationship advice? I'm like, please, don't have one. I learned some very weird things too. Apparently more than 500 people get killed in America each year by vending machines. And then there was this person that told me that most of the penguin population is gay, but they're not allowed to be gay because they have to reproduce as well. Now that last one I really have to double check with National Geographic because I'm still thinking about that one. <laughs> all jokes aside, talking to people made me realize that we were all more connected than we realized it. And I think they saw the same thing too, because they started being very intrigued by my intrigue about them. They wanted to see the photos, right? They wanted to know what all of this was about. So I would give them my phone number and I would be like, text me, I'll send you your photo tomorrow. But pairing numbers with photos the next day was very, very difficult, which is why I did the web page. I started then photographing people during the day too, because I realized that there was story during the day as well. So this lady, for example, I was in the market one day, very, very bored, I had to do this very dumb assignment, and I thought that there was nothing to inspire me until I saw her little stand. Very colorful, a lot of merchandise. I walked up to it, and I originally only wanted to photograph the stand, and I asked her if it was all right, and she's like, sure, go ahead. So I did, and then I noticed that there was all of these photos of a dude, and I'm like, what's up with that? Is he like your lover, husband, affair, what's this? <laughs> Turns out to be that the dude was her father. And he had originally started the stand, which is why she showed me this photograph, and he ran it for years. I think it was, like, it was like 40 years. And then he passed away. Now this guy, Eric, he's the doorman to one of my favorite bars in Hollywood. And we met because I would basically smoke a whole bunch of cigarettes every night, and he would be outside, and I would, again, be kind of half drunk, and he wouldn't. So eventually we got into talking, and it turned out to be that his father had passed. I lost my own father. And the fact that all of these people that I met so randomly understood that same pain really got me thinking. The woman I never saw again, Eric I see, or I double see almost every weekend, but the fact that these people could understand that really got me thinking. No matter where we come from, or what we believe in, or what we do, we've got galaxies of things in common. Now, I realize that people on the street knew a lot of things. All of you, for example, have cried. I don't care how macho and strong you try to present yourself, you've all cried. Boom, we all know sadness, we all have something in common. And the people on the street and the people everywhere, you and me, we know much more than sadness too. We understand insecurity and doubt and fear. And for some reason, we can't understand that with other people. I also met this woman who clearly is not the person on the screen for privacy reasons, but she shared with me that she felt like she was a woman trapped in the body of a man. Now this woman, she was born and raised in a country in Asia. I met her in LA and she told me that her parents would never understand. She would be kicked out of her house, it would be terrible. So whenever she was in her country, she would act as a man. And whenever she would go on a trip or whatever, she would embrace her true womanly self. This I couldn't understand. And I couldn't understand that because if we could understand so many things, because I know we do, then why the hell can't we understand diversity as well, especially as family members? I believe, and I've seen, that diversity is one of the most special and important things that we have in this world. Now, I'm not saying that all of the people that I've met are good, or that I agree with everything that I've seen on the streets or heard on the streets. But I am saying that every single person that I've met and that you will meet has something to teach you. And it's very interesting because at the end of the day, I ended up learning more about myself than about them. 
Whenever they would share their opinions, beliefs, or experiences, I would go over my own experiences, beliefs, and opinions, and sometimes I would have them modified or amplified, and sometimes I would stand behind them even stronger. Through my experiment, I also realized another thing. We're in an era which consists of freaking out with human interaction, especially with strangers. I ride an elevator in LA, I would say, at least three times a day, which is more than 21 times a week, I would say. And not once can people just walk in and say, good morning, good evening, what's up? Nothing. They're all like that on the phone. You say hello, you, they think you're flirting. They freak out. We all freak out. <laughs> and we've been interacting with each other since we were born, which is why I think this is so dumb. Whatever you do in life, whoever you choose to be, you will have to deal with people and people will have to deal with you every single day. The moment that you understand this and you try to understand people better, you will have a better understanding of yourself and you will be better automatically in whatever it is that you do. I promise. I will not deny it. I still like to take photographs of what media and society has told me to be beautiful. Honestly, I think I always will. The difference is that I'm not now aware that people are more than ugly or pretty faces or a cool or an uncool outfit. I still allow myself to criticize when somebody has wearing horrendous shoes because I'm a photographer. But I'm now conscious of the journey of the feet that are wearing the horrendous shoes as well. It goes deeper than what we see. And you? You don't need to go around writing every single interaction that you have and whenever people look at you, write it down and whenever you talk, write it down. I actually recommend you not to do it because people were giving me very weird looks in the process. And you don't need a camera to capture people's essence either. The only damn thing you need is a little bit of empathy and a little bit of disposition and you'll see. Because it really just changes. Your day would automatically get better when you make and you let people know that they matter. Because we all like to feel like we matter. And at the end of the day, we all truly do. We're all just chapters of a bigger book. And I understand that we don't have time to read every single chapter. But whenever you have time to peek into another chapter and read it, even if it's for a little bit, I recommend you to do so, instead of judging its characters by the summary of that chapter. And that will make you write a better chapter for yourself. That was my attempt on a very sweet metaphor that I came up one day, half drunk. <laughs> Look, I'm only 22. I still have a lot of things to figure out. And not having all the answers to life is okay. And having different answers to the same questions is also okay. As long as we're not harming each other, I think it's all okay. But we need to be buddies in this. We're all trying to get through hell, or life, but I call it hell. And we're all trying to do it, and we need to be buddies, and we need to help each other out, and we need to be more understanding, because we know things. And before I leave this stage, because I'm a photographer, I want to take a photo. <laughs> How many TED Talks can you give? Well, let, let's do it a video. You can do something fun. No? Nothing? Hello? You're no fun. <laughs> okay, so my dear strangers, before I leave, I really want you to make space in your heart for other strangers and to remember that we all started off as strangers to each other anyway. And don't drink too much. Thank you. Thank you.